Hey, Pumpkin. Good morning, Pumpkin. Did you see what's on the front porch? Yeah, what are you doing? You want cookies? Yeah, you want cookies. Okay, I'll get you some cookies. Look what's here. X-Series electric garage heater. This showed up five days early, so it's going to be a waiting game of anticipation to get this thing installed. I'm so excited. It's so pretty. Am I supposed to like open it up or do something with it? I have no idea. I don't think so. there's professionals coming out here to handle all that. So I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. It's only Friday and this isn't supposed to be installed until next Wednesday. So the anticipation is going to be intense, but it's supposed to snow. I bet a bunch of this vlog is probably going to be me just running around being excited about snow if it actually happens. We will see. Hopefully, eventually, at some point, maybe at the end of this video, there'll be a new heater in the gross space. I hope so. Oh yeah, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well, I'm great. Did you enjoy your cookie party? I filmed it, turned out, camera wasn't recording, so my bad. Been a long time since we had a longer vlog, so I'm going to do my best to make it long, but it's winter, so there's not a lot going on. At some point, I'll go out to the gross space and do some rearranging and some I don't know, moving things around just to make room for the electrician out there so that he's not like stepping over things to try and get the heater wired up. But otherwise, no, hopefully it's going to snow. Until that heater's installed, it might just be a lot of randomness that doesn't necessarily make any sense. It's so dark and out of focus. What is happening here? You hear that? Hear the rain? That's going to turn into, this is useless footage. Come on camera, what's going on? Try this light is on a timer, but it won't turn. Hello, all right. We're just going by audio. Apparently, maybe this will help things focus. There we go. See, okay, it's just rain right now, but I think it's gonna happen. I think we're gonna get the snow, maybe, hopefully, sometime soon. It's like 37, I think, right now, something like that. Not snow yet, but but they said come nine o'clock there will be snow. So I'm, I'm not going to stay out here and film till nine o'clock, but hopefully in the morning there will be snow. And that I know nobody else cares. I'm super excited. And the dogs are having a blast. Yeah, you like when it's cold and wet, don't you? Oh, oh, finally. It's so pretty. There's barely any snow on the ground, but it's making my heart smile. I made sure to get up extra early so I could go outside with Turbo for his first snow, and wouldn't you know, he's sleeping it for like the first time ever. Oh, that bamboo's really laying down out there. Oh, oh, I forgot something, uh-oh. Don't wanna step in it, I'm gonna ruin it, it's so pretty. And I don't have shoes on, I just woke up. Okay, yeah, we're supposed to take those inside, oops. I'll try and go back in my footsteps. Here we go, right, okay, there we go. Sorry, plants, they'll thaw out, they'll be okay. What is that? What's going on out there, huh? What is all that? Good morning. Good morning, doggy babies. Okay. You go outdoors? You go potty? You go potty? It's only been like four hours. It's Saturday morning. We were pretty late last night. You gonna go? You gonna go? See that snow? What do you do? What do you do? What is that, Turbo? He can't quite figure out what to do with his feet. And now he's stretching. What is that, Turpo? You like the snow? Oh, you're just, oh, you're gonna be very busy if you have to eat all of it. Uh, excuse, hold on, no, no, no. Turbo, you need to go potty. Go to the grass. Go on, go potty. There they go. Oh, hey, Toby. Like the snow, Toby? Hey, snow, Toby? He used to love the snow. Oh, it's so calm and peaceful outside. Yeah, it's one of the reasons I like the snow. There's something that's just tranquil about it. It basically rained and sleeted and iced for several hours before this, so it's really sticking wonderfully. So pretty. You're still busy eating snow? All right, that's enough. Come on in. Come on. <laughs> Look at you. Look at you. You got snow all over you, baby. Yes, you too. Yeah, okay. 
so nice of you to wait till you get inside to shake it off, Toby. Time to go have a play date with Cousin Louie. See dogs right now? Maybe a dog bite? I'm driving, I'm not looking at the camera. This ended up being mostly a whole lot of sleet and slush and just a sprinkle of snow on top, which is fine, I'll take it. It's pretty, so it's fine. Got kind of lucky too because it was heavy. There were some branches coming down outside while I was out there, lots of cracking and stuff, but I think it stopped just in time, so didn't end up losing power or losing any uh, like major things on the tree. I'm, we're gonna go watch the dogs play. That's what's happening right now. <laughs> you can see there's even some areas that didn't really get much. They said four to six inches, so that's no. I don't think don't think that happened. Beggars can't be choosers. It's pretty. That's all that matters. Very tranquil and relaxing. Hey Turbo, it's snowing. This time it wasn't forecasted. What's going on out there? What a fun surprise. We got more snow. It's not supposed to be happening. Oh, oh lens is greasy. Toby, come on. Wiping my lens off. Come on, Toby. Do you want to go play in the snow? A little bit, maybe. Nothing. Look at, look at. Oh, this is a pretty snow. It's the next day, by the way. So I know it's this vlog, it's a mess. What a fun surprise. Cause I was thinking that snow we had the other day, that might've been it. So pretty. <laughs> it is late, I was gonna go to bed, but now I, I feel obligated to stay outside and play. <laughs> play in the snow, not so much. It's a little bit late for that. There's that smell. Love that smell, it smells so good. Wonder how much we're gonna get since according to my weather app, it's not snowing right now. But it, definitely is and I think it has been for a minute. This is all a nice fresh dusting here that wasn't there like half an hour ago so hmm. <laughs> now that the weight of the snow has pulled the pool cover down Turbo is finally going oh I, I can't go on there what do I do yeah finally figuring that one out you're not supposed to run around the pool cover. <sighs> oh that last clip just wanted to address real quick the dogs they had a great time 
they do play rough. It's okay. They're just being dogs. They listen very, very, very well while they're playing. That's the main thing that I like to watch out for is that they're not just out of control and that way, you know, can break up fights or anything like that should it happen. But never been an issue so far. As crazy as they get while they're playing, you can just tell them to stop and they pretty much do almost instantly. Such good dogs have come a long way. It's so pretty. Yeah. The very few of y'all who are subscribed to the other channel, my cat's channel that I absolutely never upload to, may have already seen the clip of the dogs playing, so hopefully that wasn't too redundant. I actually, I may trim it down for this video. So if you want to see the full thing, it'll be over there. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's happening yet. Saturday's vlog just came out yesterday, so I'm just barely getting going with this week's vlog. Actually really starting to come down. Isn't that fun? You love the snow, don't you, Turbo? Man, he was having fun. They enjoy being able to slide around in the softness when they're running around and tackling each other and being maniacs. They seem to appreciate it. Yeah, Toby. And Toby's always loved the snow. You love the snow, don't you, Toby? Why are your eyes lighting up? My light isn't on, is it? Nope. Flash is not on. It's just old man eyes. Fun surprise. I'm sure y'all are sick and tired of me in the snow, but this is really, I've been looking forward to this for months. So that I, you just have to deal with my excitement. Sorry. Okay, I'm starting to get cold though. Turbo, it's time to go inside. Come on. What'd you get there? You found a stick? What about you? You done? I'm done. Well, that was pretty. Enjoyed the snow. It's the next day, the next night. They're supposed to, I just don't know why I'm saying they, the electrician's supposed to come tomorrow to install the heater right around here, I think is where it needs to go. You see that seam there? That's my wonderful drywall seaming up there. I know there's a stud there, so it can go up there. It's 49 pounds. That's, that's pretty heavy. So it has to go right into a stud. And I think that's pretty much the only spot where this can go. Also, I can't, I mean, I don't know. The, the wall's very occupied throughout the rest of the garage. I'd have to take down shelving and whatnot. So that will have to do, I think I'm gonna need to take the fan down, probably. The heater has to be a minimum of, I believe it said seven or, or maybe eight inches from the wall. I would prefer it come out about probably a couple of feet. So if there's clearance, get up with a ladder and get behind and clean it and service it for when bugs and stuff get inside of it. So if that sticks out a couple of feet, right around here, there has to be eight feet of clearance below it, which that shouldn't be an issue. And then I'm going to have it angled down because heat rises and I don't want it blowing directly on the plant. So it'll be angled down like right here, which means I think that's going to have to go. Oh, that's so sad. Ikea chandelier has been out here for so many years. And my little whatever this thing is called. Can't remember. It's pretty. Uh, yeah, I guess it doesn't have to go. I could move it down here. I think that the light would probably disperse pretty much the same. I could lower it down and put this around that, which is that, that'll work because the pond doesn't have any water in it. Remember, I waited on arranging the plants and filling this up for this heater thing to get done so that in case I need to move or scoot or throw some towels down in there and put a step ladder in the pond to move the chandelier, then I have that option. But yeah, wouldn't you think that would need to go if there's a 10,000 watt heater right there, then maybe there, yeah. I think it'd be a bad idea to have something hanging in front of it. That That's that's bad. Especially when the entire objective here has been safety <laughs> to make things more efficient and safe out here. Eh, I'll take it down. Aww. It doesn't look great, but did a lot of cleaning, cleaning, decluttering. This is where I have my desk that I have set up for filming. There's usually lights all over the place and airline hoses that run over to the plant racks over there. Pardon the shaky camera and need to calm down. Bring it in a little bit. I've been out here multitasking. My energy gets like pumped up when I've been doing that, but this, I would think that that should be an ample working space. I'll worry about cleaning it up when I'm done rearranging the plants after the heater's installed. I didn't see a reason to like go overboard. Like I'm not gonna sweep this up when I'm about to be moving dirt and all those things around. Didn't really make sense. I should, how am I gonna do this? The ladder's blocked in by palm trees, huh? They really, there's not much room. In order to get it out from here, you have to like kind of do a fun, weird pivoty sort of thing. I don't know. All right, that wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. Look what a great job I had done hanging this thing up. So safe. You know, the things we do, 
in our 20s, sometimes you look back and go, hmm, what the hell's wrong with me? Oh, oh, it wasn't that dumb. I had a safety chain put up there. I forgot. I did that on purpose. Because the water in that pond used to actually be directly underneath this. And I had to scoot it back so I could get better shots with the camera. Okay, this is going to take two hands. Yeah, I can't believe I almost got rid of that thing. What was it? Two falls ago? Fall of 2020. Fall of 2020. When I was doing a whole big purge thing out here. I was... I just gutted this garage and was doing the whole, I didn't even want to talk about it, but yeah, I almost got rid of it. Yeah, I'm actually glad to have taken that down because I wanted to get in there and clean the sides all along in there for a long time. They got really dusty. A light that's in it's not going to work though. These lights up here are much more powerful, so I'll have to, I don't even need to worry about that right now. All right, so there's the fan at the point that sticks out the furthest. Here's where the, okay, all right, come on. Junky measuring tape. I think it technically would need to be out eight inches, which is, that's totally doable. I would think 18 inches would probably be more safe. Right around here. I think that would work. That'd still give me enough room to come up here and get behind the heater when I need to clean it. And then hopefully that would be enough of an angle because the heater can be tilted down to blow the air down. It's gonna blow that hot air right on those plants, isn't it? That's why I would like to be able to keep this fan up here. I need to clean that. It's looking kind of crusty, isn't it? Oh, I just did so much and it wasn't recording. This keeps happening. I was essentially saying I could probably relocate some of these things and make room over here, but this fan isn't going to fit with the shelf there. And I don't want to move the shelf. It comes in useful. I like use these things and don't really have any other places to put them. I could put that in the attic, I suppose. Those never get used anymore. They get piping hot. They're newer LED versions that would make more sense to use. And actually I have a few, so. I could probably get rid of those, send those out to donation, plug them and see if they work. Don't have anywhere else for these. This is where I keep those and put the monkey pinata. Obviously that needs to stay up here. Always important to have a place to store the pinatas. That's right, always gotta have a good place to store your pinatas. There we go. So that might be all I can do tonight. I think from this point forward, the main thing was getting the spot cleared out, getting that out of the way, but the rest of it, I sort of have to wait for electrician to tell me what needs to be done. I don't even know if he hangs it up. I might have to do that. It isn't a big deal. I made sure to plug in the drills and drivers that put the batteries into a charger so I can just drill a couple pilot holes. It just goes up with two bolts. So if I have to do that part, that's not a big deal. It's just, I need to talk to him. Need some communication here. I'm not great with the unknown. I'm a bit of a planner. So this is, it's going to be a tense evening for me, but I'm really excited about tomorrow. Regardless, I need to move this. Put this way, he might need to use this. I don't know, do they have their own letters? I'm out of my element here. I don't know what's happening. I don't like the unknown. Hopefully next time we come back, there will be a heater hanging up over here. It, it's, but who knows, we'll see. Good morning, Turbo. What's going on out here? Next morning, electrician's out getting parts, getting to work. He told me that this wall has to be cleared. So that's okay. It, this is a project that I've needed to do for a long time. And I've been, for the most part, dreading just because there's a section over here where some stuff kept falling behind the old plumbing carts that used to be here. I think I talked about those carts a long time ago. They got swapped out for these newer ones right here a few months ago. So that's that just needed to be done. Just uh. see the problem is I have all these old four boards here. That's what these are. They go from right here all the way down here. Those were from well, they had the kitchen floor done, redone. And that's where the contractors Put the excess boards. I've wanted them out of here for a long time, so this is this is good. This is an opportunity. I spelt a lot of stuff in the process. <laughs> this is all the stuff that fell back behind that cart and got stuck in here. And then there was a board in front of it. So now, I'm, hey, at least I'm able to get in here and get it cleaned up. So opportunities, good things. The reason I haven't liked having these boards here is because they stick out. So the shelving that I had done here's the shelving right here of like potting soil and sulfur and ant things and, you know, gardening stuff down there that's stuck out a lot further than it's needed to because those were there. So I suppose something good is coming from this turb. What do you have? Oh, it's just a pine cone. You can have the pine cone. He has been a handful this morning. Oh my goodness, so much energy. And it's too cold to take my walk. It was like 50 yesterday. I was at 20 something the day before and it was snowing and the low tonight is nine, the low tomorrow night it's three, so. Good time to get a heater installed. We'll be able to really put this thing to the test. 
hopefully. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Do you hear it? I'm sure you do. It's incredibly loud. Look at, look at it. What a beautiful sight. Go ahead and turn it off. The fan has to keep running to cool it down. So yeah, we'll just go with it. It's fine. Go ahead and get a little bit further away. So it's hopefully not quite as loud. I don't, I've never turned it off before, so I don't know how long it takes for it to cool off and fully shut down. And really, actually, I probably shouldn't even turn it off because it's 22 outside right now, I believe. It got so cold last night. And oh, hold on, need to back it up. Oh, it's about two and a half days later. It took longer than expected to get it installed. There were some special wires and things that needed to be ordered and yeah, things just get complicated. It did go fairly smoothly though, considering there weren't any major disruptions other than just having to wait for some more wiring. That's pretty much it. There we go. That was like a minute and a half. That's how long it takes it to cool down and fully shut off. Good to know. I'd mentioned before that I did want this out a little bit further, but the, the, the electrician didn't, didn't ask me. I just came out here and it was done, so. There it is, that works for me. It's probably better actually the way that he positioned it instead of, I wanted it like eight inches forward, which I wouldn't think would make that much of a difference, but I think this is better. The way it's angled is blowing to where it comes down and hits the surface of the water and just barely misses the plants. I was concerned that this was gonna blow right on the plants and I was going to have to do some like major reconfiguring out here, but it doesn't. Before I go too much further, I should actually talk about like what this thing is. This is the Dynaglow. It's a 10,000 watt electric garage heater, has multiple modes, can run on an auto setting, which is what I have it on. So set the temperature and it'll run to maintain that temperature. It can run as just a fan during the summertime if you just want it to cool the space off. Has a low and a high. So the low setting is 7,500 watts, high is 10,000. I believe it goes 55 to 95 degrees. It doesn't have an auto freeze setting. Some of the electric garage heaters have a setting in them, so if they sense freeze, they automatically kick on. I have other sensors out here to warn me if for some reason it should get that cold out here, then my phone starts beeping and making all kinds of noise, so I know when to act on it with this heater. I don't think that that's going to be a problem. So 10,000 watts might seem like overkill, but I've researched garage heaters for months, and there were several others that I wanted that were much cheaper than this one, but they were all sold out in the way the shipping things have been going. And I ended up settling on this one. And that's partially because it's sold at like Lowe's and Home Depot big box stores. So there are a lot of reviews on it. It's easier to return it should something go wrong. And it had the least amount of bad reviews out of the other ones, but I mean, that's kind of thrown off because it had so many more reviews because it's just a popular heater. At least the 7,500 watt one is. The 10,000 watts pretty popular. There's a 15,000 watt. I thought that, that that might be overkill. 10,000 watt, I'm sure, is overkill as well. But so many of the reviews I was reading were from people who had the 7,500 watt one, and then they said that eventually they bumped up to the 10,000. So I was like, well, might as well just get the 10,000. I can run it at 7,500 and bump it up should I need to. I went with electric instead of gas because it's just more affordable. Running gas, there are permits and things that have to be involved. And when it's out to the garage, or I assume anywhere, there are like multiple types of exhaust and vents and things that have to go in. It would have been several thousand dollars to have done it that way. Gas would have been more efficient, heating wise, more than likely, and uh, it doesn't dry the air out as much. This one really dries the air out, but that's nothing I haven't dealt with out here before. That's why I have the ultrasonic humidifier in the pond and whatnot. For the first few hours that it was running, it dried the air out. I have a, like a chart, a graph here you can look at where you can see the temperature goes way up. It took a few minutes for the heater to sort of warm up. Then it spiked right up. It got crazy cold in here dropped to 42 because it was, I think it got down to nine degrees that particular night. And then last night, oh my gosh, I think it was one, one or two degrees outside. So this got installed just in time, really a couple days late, because it was tremendously cold in here for one night, even with three space heaters going. But it worked out okay. This was done late afternoon and got things nice and toasty in a very, very short amount of time. So everything that was looking sad, Sprung right back up, but it really dried the air out because I didn't have any water down in here yet. And then, oh, I forgot to, this also required permits and things. I went through the directions and then looked at like city codes and things like that. It technically wouldn't even have been legal for me to have installed this myself. There are a lot of DIY videos out there installing garage heaters. Maybe those are people who live in areas where they don't have regulations about those things, but anything over a certain voltage or something like that has to be done by a professional. 
And um, well, and you know, it could burn your house down. And if you want homeowners insurance to cover that, needs to be done by a professional. All kinds, there's there's a lot that goes into researching the heaters, making sure that they're ones that are approved and like UL listed and rated and whatnot. This is supposed to be a pretty safe heater, has lots of safety features on it to kick it on and kick it off. So not really very concerned about that. I actually, I feel so relieved, incredibly relieved to not have space heaters and extension cords on the ground out here anymore. There's some messy stuff because clean out the pond over there. There's so much room for activity. Well, there will be. I still need to <laughs> organize all of this stuff and get it back up there on that shelf. We got about another foot, maybe eight to 10 inches of space here by getting all those old boards out of here. I kept a couple. Whatever, back to the humidity issue. So I saw the temperature dropping, came out here, and then I, I got in here and cleaned out all of the leaves and debris and started filling it up. And then I went back and just like barely wiggled this plant rack and a whole plume of junk came out from the bottom and I remembered, oh yeah. Yeah, that's that's why I usually flip this up on its side and hose it out and everything in the fall. You know, I just, I don't know, forgot. It's not a big deal. Nothing that can't be cleaned up with a skim net. It'll take like probably three minutes to get the floaty stuff out of there. I only have it halfway filled right now because I, uh, well, I went to bed and didn't want to leave the water running and haven't started it back up today. Got the pond about roughly halfway full. Kicked the heater up to just about full blast because I really, I, I was playing with my new toy. I wanted to see what it was capable of. And like I mentioned, it got down to one degree last night. So probably a good time to run it at full blast. Once there was water in here, the humidity just started climbing right up, which I wasn't sure how that was going to work because when there's evaporative action going on, normally that will cool the air. With heaters, especially electric heaters, there's always a push and pull between warming the air and then drying it out. The warmer it gets, the more dry the air gets, which is why I have this ultrasonic disc thing in here, which I'll talk about that more in a minute. Normally I have waterfalls and pumps and all sorts of things moving the water around in here. Pumps broken, I use really cheap pumps. So every few years I usually have to get a new one. The reason I didn't keep filling it up because I didn't want the water to get too terribly gross in the amount of time that it takes to get the new pump. Trying to like order things and keep things moving in a particular manner so that things are just easier to manage. Yeah, just having the warm air hitting the surface of the water that pretty much made the humidity climb up like high. Like a lot of the water evaporated overnight. You can see the water line right, just right above my finger. So like, probably a good two inches of water evaporated out of this thing overnight from having the heat running on it. I didn't even need to have the ultrasonic humidifier fogger thing running, which is nice because I was thinking about it. If you watched the videos last year when I got that and I was running it, that thing is very efficient when the water's warm. When the water's cold like it was most of last year, it still works well, but it doesn't like create a huge cloud. When things are warm, this will fill this entire garage with a uh, foggy mist. So that's not going to work with a 10,000 watt electric heater, right? I don't want that sucking up all that wet, moist air. That seems like a pretty terrible idea. So there's going to be some time that I need to take to sort of learn the new dance in here with having the temperatures warmer. The care for the tropical plants, totally different when things are warm, like especially when they're as warm as it got. I really, I pushed it. I think that got up to like 88 maybe at one point and then I was like, okay, we need to dial that down. That's totally not necessary for it to be that warm. 77, I think, would be a nice sweet spot. That's usually good for most plants. Might have to set the heater a little bit higher so that the perimeter can receive that heat. I was able to keep this fan up there and I got it angled so it blows right over here. It blows down and then comes and sweeps around. It's gonna help exchange the hot and cool air so that the cold air isn't settled too much down low and help blow it around the garage. And it actually it seems to be working fairly well. In the middle over here, it is roughly five to 10 degrees warmer I'm, it's going to take a while to get like lots and lots of data on the temperature changes, especially since I keep adjusting the heater. I don't really need to get a ton of those either. That's pretty much how it's always been. That's why the cold tolerant plants go towards the garage door. The more tropical they are, come towards the front because there usually is a fairly significant temperature difference between that end and this end. So nothing's changed there, except that the warm end is now much warmer and the cold end is nowhere near as cold as it used to be. That's so nice. Oh, it's so nice. See, as I move down this way, that's where like the oleanders and the more tender yuccas, the windmill palms, mule palms, that's where those plants are because they can take that cold. And those, most of these aren't even in here most of the winter. When it's dropping below 10, I like to bring them in. Oleanders, when it drops below 15, it's kind of warm to defoliate. Oh, overall, I am 
super pleased with this heater. Last night was the best night to really put that thing to the test. We don't drop into the single digits all that often, maybe a handful of times every year. And on rare occasions, it may get even cooler, might go below zero Fahrenheit, I'm talking Fahrenheit here. So that's really the ultimate test. During normal winter temperatures where the lows are in the 20s or 30s and highs are in the 40s, this is a, it's not going to need to run that much. So right now, I'm sure that that was a huge power suck. <laughs> gonna feel that on the electric bill, but that really shouldn't be typical. It's a big heater, so it's going to cost some money to keep it running, but I would imagine the majority of the winter it'll be on that 7,500 watt setting. And like I said, I'll probably try and keep it around 77 degrees and just see how well that works with balancing the humidity and how the plants are moving and growing. The warmer it is, the more water they need, the more pests are going to be prevalent, the more lighting they need too. And I, there have been plenty of years where I was able to keep it in the 70s and low 80s in here by wrapping the area in plastic, which is a monumental pain in the butt. It's not something I enjoy doing and uh, I don't have to do it anymore. This thing heated the entire garage, no problem. So it seems unnecessary to wrap the plastic around in here. I kept the materials to do it just in case there were going to be some humidity struggles. But as I saw last night, I don't think that that's really going to be much of an issue as long as I like make sure the water levels are right and that things angled in the proper position and circulation and whatnot. And having the plants well watered makes a gigantic difference in the humidity too. When everything is freshly watered, normally for like three days afterwards, the humidity is just amazing. Actually, sometimes it gets a little bit too humid. It can be like in the 80s and 90s. And I don't like for it to go that high because you start to deal with fungal issues and bacteria. Like, mold and just blech. Things that can be remedied with good circulation. I have two fans out here and then the third on that heater keeps the air moving really well. So maybe that won't be an issue with this heater that dries things out more. I don't know, we're gonna find out. Yeah, that's like, it's just now hitting me and it feels so nice that I don't have to wrap this space in the plastic. I really did not enjoy doing that. It wasn't really hard to do. It's just cumbersome and usually once I got going with it, it wasn't a big deal. But every single time I would come in and out of the space, I had to like undo a zipper and zip it back. It was just ugh. a lot of work that is now totally unnecessary. Things have been cooler in here this year because, you know, it took so much longer to get this heater situation handled than I had thought. I was hoping to have this done in October. But yeah, well, here we are. That's just the way things are nowadays. Lots of delays with shipping and being able to get professionals in to get work done. It worked out totally fine. I was concerned at moments where we dropped into single digits about the plants, but they pulled through and did okay. I made sure that they weren't stopping wet, but not bone dry, turned the fans down and just hoped that they would sail through. And they did. Humidity wise, it's been pretty good in here too. I mean, look at this Tremanthes. The trio stars, they're looking pretty good. They're a little dry. I do need to water because as cold as it got the other night, I didn't want to go in and do a fresh watering. I don't have any brown tips though. Actually, a lot of them have lots of new fresh growth on them. That's not the product of this heater that was finished being installed yesterday. That's just how they've pulled through. That's a huge relief, right? So I would think things should only get better, but again, it's going to be like learning a new dance, a new rhythm with everything. A rhythm that I'm fairly familiar with because like I said, I've kept it warm in here before. Uh, I just more have to learn, like, what do I have to have the heater set on to actually maintain what temperature? Was, I had this set earlier at uh, 72 and uh, it, the temperature just plummeted. So it looks like it does need to be set up a little bit warmer than what I actually want it to be. And I think that probably has something to do with having a fan right behind it. That wouldn't surprise me. Over time, we get those things figured out. The space can be nice and toasty. I can do seed propagations out here. I haven't done seed propagation, seed starting and cutting propagations. I haven't really messed with those in years because I don't like having all the seed packs in the house and my counters are really cold. There aren't really many places to even keep them. I don't like the heat mats. I've, I've Almost every single one I've tried really hasn't worked that well. Like they've worked okay, but not fantastic. At least anything where you go past two feet, I don't usually have great results. But if the air out here is in the 70s, I can do seed starting again. How fun is that? Which is good because I, I, I ordered too many seeds again. We'll do it, right? We get so sick of being trapped in the house and so anxious to get planting that we get on the seed sites. It's like $3 for a pack of seeds, so you add to cart and another $3 add to cart and like, ooh, that's pretty, add to cart. Next thing you know, you have like a hundred seed, not that many, maybe for some of us, but yeah, that's, that's gonna be a thing. I'll be able to get some seeds going in here. Most of my seeds that I grow though are scatter seeds, so that probably won't be a thing. Chair doesn't stay here. The chair goes over here where the desk is, but I'm not gonna finish setting up my desk, which just involves pulling two things out and setting up slab of fake wood on top of it. That needs to wait until I get in here and 
clean that out and get those shelves reorganized and the space just cleaned and tidied some more. And I keep thinking about some of the plants that I've lost over the years because I couldn't keep it warm enough or like the breaker would trip and then it would get cold out here and then like the Likuwawa palm. Love that palm, but it really didn't do fantastic out here because they like it very warm and humid. And uh, every time that breaker would trip, which is why, if you don't know the background, okay, uh, I need to back up. This house is wired very funny. So uh, the space heaters, every single one of them had to be run to a different breaker, basically. So I had extension cords everywhere. One plugged in here, the others ran out the garage doors and plugged into outdoor outlets. And uh, the uh, Christmas lights would make them trip all the time. You have to make sure you turn all the lights off to open the garage doors. It is just a mess. And there were so many occasions where somebody would forget to turn off the lights when they would open the garage door. And then guess what? Breaker trips, garage doors partially open and it gets super cold inside. And then it, you have to rely on like 750 watt to 1500 watt space heaters to get things warmed back up, which just the space is, it was just too big for that. So it would take days to get things warmed back up. So if I needed to water, then it got that cold, then I'd have to wait a few days and just pray that it's going to be okay, hope for the best. I don't have to do that anymore because this is set up on its own sub panel and the electrician, fantastic guy, when told them about like how the wiring's just funky in the house and things like there just isn't quite enough power to some of the outlets, that's how it's always been. He basically went through and pulled things and rearranged them and put them onto some separate breakers that he went ahead and installed in the sub panel. So like that's going to solve a lot of other issues that have been going on in the house. And overall, he just made things much more safe so that there wouldn't be any overdraw from anything. So another huge weight taken off the shoulders, just knowing that the breaker is not going to be tripping all the time. There were days during the winter, like mostly during the holidays when the Christmas lights would be on outside. Not so much when I switched mostly to LED, but prior to that where I'd have to go downstairs and flip the breaker like three times a day. So that's why normally the plants come in and well, they used to come in around Thanksgiving, but now they seem to come in around late October, early November. But I would bring them in and then keep things more on the cool side in the area because I couldn't really run the heaters, at least not once the Christmas lights were up. I couldn't run them at full capacity. So I just would let the plants hang out and chill. They always actually, they being the plants, always seem to, some might get into that. Like they would just chill for a few months and then crank the heat up and then they'd be like, oh. Like they would sense a season, which tropical, true tropical plants don't really sense much of a season. A little bit, but not much. It's mostly related to precipitation more so than temperature, but that affects temperature. Anyways, don't have to do that now. Now, from the moment the plants come inside in October or November, can pull that heater on, pull the heater on, turn the heater on and keep things nice and toasty. So things will keep growing and looking nice and then go outside looking better than they do if I have to keep things more on the cool side. Things stayed fairly cool out here last year because I just, I, the, there was stuff going on health wise and I just didn't have the energy to really focus on the plants. So I let things stay cool. Then when they went outside, they don't look so good. But keeping it warmer, that shouldn't be an issue unless I can't keep up with it because it's warmer. So again, that goes back to there being sort of a dance I'm going to have to figure out to uh, what's going to work best for the plants and also for myself with taking care of them. That's something we all have to do with our plants, right? Always have to find that rhythm of what the plant needs versus what we can provide. And that's what's going to go on out here. But that shouldn't be much of an issue. Things aren't automated, but with the pumps and the hoses and everything that are in this reservoir watering, I just flip a switch and it goes very, very quickly. So I don't foresee any issues there. Pest wise, fungus wise, those sorts of things. We'll deal from when they come. That's nothing I haven't dealt with before. I mean, heck, mealybugs are just part of my life now. I've just accepted them. They're part of me. Oh, and another great thing. So many ways life is improving now. All of these years, if it would be below like 30 outside, then on trash and recycling night, we'd have to come out here, gather the trash and recycling, then go back in the house, around to the front door, walk around, go to the driveway, get in the dumpsters and take it out. It isn't that big of a deal, but it gets annoying, especially when it's like 10 degrees outside. Taking the trash out last night was horrible. It was so cold, but it wasn't as bad as it usually would be because this heater is so efficient that even when it's super cold outside, I mean, I'd prefer to not but this garage door can open very briefly and uh, this heater's more than capable enough of warming things back up very quickly. As I mentioned with those other heaters, just, you know, regular space heaters, it would take days to warm things back up if the temperature were to drop when it's that cold outside. Not anymore. 
Even in fact, I ran an errand today. I ran to Sam's Club and opened the garage door, went up to the car, put the garage door down, just like, you know, a normal person, instead of having to walk around the house and hope the gate's not frozen shut. It's just overall being a pain to get in and out. Nope, door up and down, no problem. It was 16 degrees outside. I checked the sensors, temperature in here only dropped two degrees and went right back up. Got some fun stuff I was at Sam's too. I'll show you that in a minute. There it is, the story behind the heater. And I'm just very happy. I am so happy right now. Tremendous weight has been left off my shoulders. This is something that I have wanted for ever. Okay, maybe not forever, but I mean, since I was a teenager, I've wanted an insulated and heated garage with a high ceiling where I could keep all my tropical plants and that I have that now. Big deal to me. This was an investment. It was nowhere near as expensive as I thought it was going to be, so that was a relief. It wasn't cheap, but I do think it was worth it. I, some of these plants I've had for so many years, I'm tired of spending my winter times worrying that they're going to die if the door gets left open or if the breaker trips or all of those things. And the breaker could still trip on this one, but like I have alarms out here to let me know and it's not going to be like a two or three times a day. And I, the safety issues that go along with that as well. And this expands what I can do out here because by not having the plastic up in here, normally that plastic would go right down here and then it would come through right here. So kind of an L shape right there. By not having to have the plastic, I have the entire garage at my disposal to keep plants. So I can get more plants. That's something everybody's gotta love, right? I don't know if I will get more plants. I'm sure I will, but I have been somewhat trying to cut back because of the maintenance and really space. But now that's not going to be as much of an issue, so. How fun and exciting. It's not even about necessarily being able to buy more plants and keep more plants. I'm pretty happy with my collection as it is. There aren't many plants where I'm like, oh, I really want that. But there are activities <laughs> that I could do. Like I mentioned the seed starting propagations. I used to, back when I didn't have as many plants and there's a little more space out here, I'd start my baskets inside. So I would get the center plant, the filler going in the middle, which would usually be a begonia that I would take from a cutting. And then come May, it would be nice and full and I would just pack some petunias around it. Or if I was able to get plugs during the winter time, I'd start hanging baskets inside and get some annuals going. I haven't been able to do that for several years, but now I can do that again. And how fun is that? Get to do gardening activities inside. It's been such a long time. It won't be as much of just waiting out the winter and keeping things just barely trotting along. <laughs> just barely keeping things trotting along until it's nice outside and do things again. So fun. And just in, well, less than 24 hours, this warmth really woke up the mosquitoes. I have a good eight to 10 mosquito bites on my face and legs now. Gardening, gotta love it. Other reason that this water needs to be circulating in here. I use the mosquito bit granules. I know I'm going off topic here, but since I brought it up, I feel like I have to follow through. The granules are on the surface of the pots that usually handles the mosquitoes. So I just need to do a fresh sprinkling on everything. Yeah, that's really neither here nor there. I'm sure you've noticed I didn't get that Ikea lampshade, white shade thing. I was calling it a chandelier before. That's just a light shade. Didn't get that hung back up. I was over there feeling around those bulbs and those are, they get fairly warm. I just didn't feel safe doing that. I'll figure something else out with that down the line for right now. I think it's fine without it. But I would like to get it hung back up because it's just a weird random colorful thing that I think is just sort of weird and funny to have out here. I had planned on doing a bunch of rearranging in here once the heater was installed, but it, like I said, it took a day and a half longer than I thought it would. This vlog has to come out in, well, not too long from right now. So I don't really have time for that, but it's not even a matter of time really, because I could probably make it work. The plants are just, they're more on the dry side because of those extreme cold temperatures we've had the last several days. And you know, we say the only thing to do with a thirsty plant is water it. When they're dry, when they're not well hydrated period, they're more brittle. Their cell structures are more brittle. It's just easier to bruise and break things. So I've given everything a fairly good watering. I'm going to go ahead and give them another watering here fairly soon. And in a couple of days, I'll feel better about moving, at least moving the big ones around. The little plants should be fine. Like they're, they're, they're okay. It's things with long stems and branches where I want to be careful. Not a big deal though. We're only a month into winter. Spring isn't that far ahead, but we're not that far into the season as it is. So there's plenty of time for lots of fun stuff out here. But yeah, overall, really happy with this heater. I kept an eye on it last night to really see how it was going to work with those cold temperatures and like every, I don't know, half hour, something like that, I'd really keep track. But I'd open up my app and take screenshots and you can see when the temperature is getting colder outside. It was still getting warmer in here. 
That's what we want to see. At the very least for it to be able to hold steady. It was warmer than it even needed to be. When it's super cold outside, like below 15 degrees, I'm normally happy with it just being 50 to 55 in here. It didn't need to be like 77 or 76, whatever I had it set at, but I just wanted to see if it could do it. And it did. Did it very well. The Mandevilla back here, that's her, oh, it's very washed out. I don't want to hold my camera too far over the water. See those pretty peachy coral blooms in there with the pink of the Medanella? Yeah, it's really washed out. Just trust me, it's really pretty. <laughs> I can't get around right now because all the windmill bombs and things that are normally outside are in because, well, like I said, it got down to like, what, 1.8 or 2 degrees last night. I don't like to push them with that. That's too cold. Below 10, they got to come in. Pretty sure I already said that. Yeah, so right now I can't quite walk around. <laughs> Wasn't I just saying that I had room for more plants out here? I mean, I do, but that's more on the other side. The other side needs to be organized. So I'm, you, don't even, you don't need to see it. There's a mess over there from all the stuff that had to be done over here get that cleaned up and there'll be a whole nother side of the garage could move things through. really just another like two feet of the perimeter where i could put a row of plants that would fill things up nicely not that it needs it it's more than enough out here i'm very happy with my plants oh here's what happened at sam's i need a dishwasher detergent and well i saw the bulbs they always have the best deal on bulk bulbs every year most years, I usually grab a few bags of the Caladiums. It's like, I think $14 for 24. It's pretty good. It used to be cheaper, but still, that's pretty good. I have 50 or 75 gladiolas and then a few gigantic elfin ear tubers. Those always grow very nicely. And a dozen dahlias. That's it. I'm not going fancy with dahlias this year. Not doing it. Not after how that went last year with the ground squirrels. Nope, don't think so. Those are a roll the dice kind of plant for me. I never know how they're going to do because the roots get chewed up, so. I don't want to spend a lot of money on them. And sun. My trees have gotten really big, so I don't really quite have the sun for them, but I always like to keep trying them, even though it doesn't really work. So I wanted to keep it on the cheaper side. All right. There we have it. Was a long eight or nine days waiting to get this thing done, but had plenty of fun with the dogs and in the snow. It's kind of nice to relax a little bit and just sit back and not have to worry about things. And then this took longer than expected, but everything went smoothly. And all the other things I talked about. Nothing but good things have come from this, so I'm very grateful and so freaking happy and excited about the way this is going to change things out here for me. On that note, just a thank you to subscribers, to everybody who likes and comments the videos and uh, all of y'all. It just, I, this is not something that I probably would have been able to do without the channel. So I am grateful. I'm very grateful that everybody out there, you helped pay for this and make this happen. and. Uh, kind of make something that seems like a silly thing to call a dream, but this really is a dream of mine that's come true. Y'all helped make that a real thing, so thank you. I'm very grateful. I appreciate all of you. Okay, though, as I mentioned, I need to give everything another good watering, get this video edited so everybody can see it on time, hopefully. And uh, once everything's well hydrated, start moving some things around, have some parts coming to get this up and running again, and oh, so fun. So many possibilities. I'm so excited. Thanks for hanging out. Different kind of video with as much time that was spent with the dogs in the snow, but that's you, you want a longer video. So there you go. But you know, it's a vlog and that's what was going on with life. And I thought it was fun to share Turbo's first snow and him playing with his cousins and whatnot. May not be plant related, but hopefully I will put a time thing up maybe at the beginning of the video so that people can get through or I'll have timestamps. I don't know. I'll try and do something so that people don't have to spend like 10 or 12 minutes just watching dogs in the snow. Hopefully I did that. If so, you're welcome. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. Life's just good and everything's nice. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.